Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna to compare two excellent budget Wi-Fi 6 routers to each other. To my left, I have the TP-Link Archer X55. To my right, I have the Ray RG4. I'll go over their internet speed test, local speed test, range test. We'll go over their apps, specs, ports, everything like I normally do. Now this video is sponsored by Ray, but as always, I do all my own speed test, range test, everything. So everything is my opinion. I have all those numbers here. Let's jump straight into the review. Now, both of these have the same speed rating of AX3000. They're both similarly priced. The Ray is a little bit cheaper, but they're both a little over $100 retail price. So we're gonna start with the TP-Link. We have a WPS Wi-Fi button right here, a factory reset. We have a USB 3.0, which means you can connect a hard drive to this thing, an external hard drive and share it on your network. So that is something that the TP-Link can do that the Ray cannot. This thing has five ports. They're all gigabit ports. They're all dedicated, which means the internet has to go to the WAN port. And then you have four other ports that you can go off of. And then you have the power button on and off. So you don't need to unplug it if you wanted to reset it. And we have the power port. And this thing is wall mountable, just like the Ray. The antennas move. If you did wall mount it, you could pretty much put it like this and you can twist them like this and this as well. So within a reasonable amount of uh, customization for the antennas. Okay, next we get to the Ray RGE4. We have four gigabit ports. This is where the internet goes to the WAN port, wide area network. Now the Ray supports dual WAN aggregation. So if you have two up to gigabit internet sources, you can plug them here and they will combine to give you even faster speeds. So this is more on the rare side, but it does support that. Uh, and again, uh, pretty much four gigabit ports. Uh, we have the power supply factory reset and we have a mesh button now. The Ray supports Ray E Mesh 3.0, which means if you get another Ray E router like this one, you can actually combine them to each other to create a mesh network. Now the TP-Link also supports something similar called One Mesh. However, the One Mesh typically works with the TP-Link extenders, not with TP-Link um, routers themselves. So just as a heads up. Um, unless they decide to change that in the future with the firmware update. And just like the TP-Link, you can wall mount this as you guys can see here. And for antenna placements, these do not twist left and right. So these just kind of bend up and down. That's pretty much their motion right here. So if you were to wall mount it, this would go up, up and up. And these three can twist. So you could twist these if you wanted to and go like that. So the side ones do have more free play but the Ray has one additional antenna <clears throat> versus the TP-Link. So we have the power supplies right here, TP-Link to my left, Ray on my right. It does not come with the sticker. I'm the one that labeled these just because I have so many tech devices I lose track sometimes. But TP-Link is 100 to 240 volts, outputs 12 volts at two amps, which means it takes up to 24 watts of power. That's the power plug right there. And the Ray is also 100 to 240 volts at output is 12 volts at 1.5 amps so it's 18 watts so it takes slightly less power next we jump into internet speed test now no matter how fast the router is when you're accessing the internet you are limited by your internet speeds unless the router itself is actually capping those speeds which in my case both of these are my internet speeds are 5 gigabits per second upload and download and both of these routers cap internet speeds of up to gigabit even with the ray i'm not using dual wan aggregation so even with the ray i'm actually being capped to gigabit speeds. Now, for my testing devices, I used my Wi-Fi devices as always, so my Galaxy S23 Ultra and iPhone 15 Pro Max for both of these. And just for kicks, my Wi-Fi 7 device, which is my OnePlus 11 5G. Now, both Wi-Fi 16 and Wi-Fi 7 are backwards compatible with Wi-Fi 6, and they typically do get faster speeds. So, but both of these were tested with the same devices. Now, looking at the results, there is a drop both for the TP-Link and for the Ray. And I should also mention that both of these I did hook up via Ethernet to my computer, which both gave very similar results just under gigabit speed. So both fine when hooked up via Ethernet. However, over Wi-Fi, it does look like the TP-Link performed better for the internet speed test uh, overall. Uh, the 
Wi-Fi 6E upload did actually do better on the RAID than it did for the TP-Link, but overall I would say that the TP-Link did better for the internet speed test. Now to find the true performance of these routers, I like to do a local speed test where I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. So this gets rid of my ISP, which is my internet service provider, and the public speed test server, which can be busy at times. So this thing usually gives much more consistent results, which is why I like to do this speed test the most. Looking at the results we can see that they're a lot closer to each other when you remove the ISP and the public speed test server now again overall the TP-Link did do slightly better with some caveats that the Wi-Fi 6C on the upload section again for the Ray-E did do better but very very similar performance to each other when you get rid of the public speed test server. Next we'll get into range test. Now range will vary based on location so if you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers around all of this stuff can negatively impact your range. So pretty much more obstructions, less range. So at 20 feet away, we could see that they're pretty similar in performance. The Ray is beating in some sections and the TP-Link is beating in others. But at 50 feet, this is when it becomes apparent where the Ray is actually doing a lot better. And at 50 feet, I am outside. And at 100 feet, I am across the street. And the Ray is just doing a lot better, noticeably better than the TP-Link. So this is kind of where the Ray shines is in the range test and possibly because it has one more antenna uh, maybe because the antennas are larger and taller I'm not sure but overall the range did the array did do better in the range test now for setup and configuration, you use their respective apps. So with the TP-Link, you use the Tether app. With the Ray, you use the Ray app. And they're both available on iOS and on Android. And they're both very simple to use. Now, in terms of functionality, they're pretty similar to each other. Starting with parental controls, they both support it. TP-Link gives you a little more options in terms of parental controls. And if you want, uh, like filtering websites and stuff, where I didn't see that with the Ray. And if you want additional options with the TP-Link, they do offer a subscription to give you even more options. In terms of SSIDs, which are the Wi-Fi name you connect to, they both have a lot of options with Ray having one additional. So starting with the main Wi-Fi name, which is your main SSID, they both have the ability to separate out the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz. They both have a guest Wi-Fi if you want to create that. They both have an Internet of Things Wi-Fi. So if you have smart home devices you want to connect to a certain uh, Wi-Fi, you can make an IoT Wi-Fi and connect to that. And the Ray has an additional gaming SSID, which gives higher priority uh, to devices that are hooked up to that are connected to that SSID. So that's something I don't know if I've seen that before. I have seen a lot of not a lot, but I have seen other routers and mesh systems that give priority to games. But I, I can't remember if I've seen one that has a specific gaming SSID. So the Ray does have that. So a little bit better. Um, it might not be important to you at all. Uh, it might be important to you. I don't know, but it does have one slight advantage there. Uh, they both have uh, the ability to control the transmit power, so if you want to reduce that to reduce the amount of uh, radiation potentially, uh, to reduce the signal strength, they do have that, and they both have uh, wireless scheduling where you can actually turn off Wi-Fi uh, during certain times of the day. So let's just say if you're sleeping and you don't need Wi-Fi to be on, uh, you can actually schedule it where it'll actually turn off during certain times. So they both have that ability, which is kind of cool, and they both offer VPN options. So uh, both for the price, they're actually fairly feature rich. Both of these are really good routers. To me, I'm looking at performance and performance wise, just to really kind of summarize, I would say that the TP-Link overall had better numbers over Wi-Fi the closer I was to it and the Ray had better numbers overall the farther I got from it relative to the TP-Link. So the closer I am to this, the better numbers I got for this guy and the farther away I go, I actually get better numbers on the Ray. So better range test, better speed test close up, better speed test farther away. So it really just depends on your specific situation, um, you know, what you're looking for. But 
obviously both of these have certain other features um, like the TP-Link has the USB 3.0 so if you want to share your hard drive among the network you have an additional port with this thing better parental controls as well with, with Ray you have you know dual one aggregation you have specific gaming modes with this thing you know so there it, it just really depends what you're looking for so let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below and as always smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one